here we are on our sixth of the tutorial of the Lazarus series. Um, we're learning Game Maker Studio and this time we're going to be putting it all together. So far in this tutorial series, the new stuff we've learned has been about the step event, about the if any object at action, and we've also understand some concepts about sprite size origin, interlaping, room size, grid size, and solid objects. And so far in making this game, we've created, well, we've ticked off all the specifications about Lazarus. We've ticked off most of the boxes specifications. We've created a pit of boxes and we have a background image and music. Okay, in this one, we're going to use a controller object to make the boxes appear above Lazarus position. We're going to make the boxes be chosen at random and that the next box is displayed in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. And then we're going to test it and make sure it plays without error. Okay, so let's get this um, control object up and rocking. So, objects coming over here, I'm going to come over and create a new object, and I'm gonna call that object obj underscore control. Okay, nope, doesn't have any sprites, don't do that. Now, we need to add um, a create. So, we're gonna have an event, um, that is going to be upon creation. And upon creation, we're going to, do, I'm going to introduce you to a new action. And that new action is called choose. So basically it's randomly going to choose between a number of different options. Right here. So the options we're going to give it is we wanted to choose between the different boxes that are going to be happening. So remember the boxes were the object um, next stone. So we've got object next stone, next object metal next object wood next and object card next. Now it's important that we put the correct right, the correct name in here, otherwise it's not going to identify with it. Oh beautiful, thank you. Object, or we could just let it do the drop down for us and show us. So object stone next is our first one. I want to add another one. So it's that little little plus there. We want to go to OBJ object stone object metal next and add another one obj object um, wood next Radio, and add that into oh sorry object not object wood object wood next thank you and obj object card next now it's going to choose one of those four objects randomly between them and we need to assign it somewhere. So I'm going to assign it to a temporary variable called box. Okay, so what's going to happen upon the creation of the object controller, it's going to choose one, two, three, four of those, one of those four, and then assign it to the object box. Now, the next thing we then need to do is we then need to create an instance of whatever is in that variable box. So I'm going to choose, uh, we need to create an instance. So here, create instance, instance of, and I'm just going to choose box, which all lowercase, make sure it's spelled correctly. Box, are you happy with that? Uh, oh, it's going to be happy with it. Right, it's going to create the object box whatever is stored there. Radio. Uh, okay, so we're gonna create the object box. We're gonna position it, and what we want to position is down the bottom left-hand corner, which is zero, X is zero, but the Y, well remember our, let's have a look at our room. And our room, room zero. Remember the size of our room? We made it 1040 by 800. So we want it to be down in this bottom corner here, but we want it to be at this point here, which is actually 0760, because it's 40 points up from the 800. So let's go back to the workspace. And so I do away. And so we want it to be an X of 760. Awesome, no, not relative, relative, and the layer. Well, what layer are we going to put it on? So let's go back up to the room and have a look. We've got the box layer, which I put in there before. We won't put it on that because we want it to actually sit above the wall. We want it to sit above here because otherwise it will disappear. So we're going to put it onto the box layer, which is just capital B O X. Remember, we've got to get the, the actual right, and it has to be in inverted commas. 
if we don't get the it's spelt correctly it's going to be a miss okay so it's going to upon creation at the very beginning of the object controller is going to randomly choose one of these four um, next objects and it's going to position in the bottom left hand corner of our screen so the next thing we need to do is we we need to now look at a concept which is called a um, is called a flag variable or a machine state variable. So what we need to do, we need to keep a record of whether or not there's actually a box falling down. Let's go in the room, we've got a box falling down here. We don't want other boxes to appear. So I only want the box to move from here up to here when there is the boxes have stopped falling. There's no currently falling box. So let's go back over to here and we can create a little variable to do that and to do that i need to assign a value assign a variable so let's see variable um, assign a variable so i need to assign a variable upon creation the variable name is going to be called falling box Right, and I'm going to assign it the value of zero. For us, zero means there's no falling boxes, and if their value is one, then it's going to be there is a falling box. Okay, so that's our creation event. Uh, the next event we have to do is a step event. So I'm going to add event, and I'm going to put step in, which we've used before, and basically each step is going to check and see whether there's a falling box. Or so, or whether the, vari the variable falling box is, yeah, whether there's a falling box. So first off, I need to say an if variable, just here, and that variable is called falling box. If falling box is equal to zero, so, um, so if falling box is equal to zero, so i.e. there's no boxes currently falling, then what we need to do then we need to check a few things first. So we need to check what's called check instance. So I'm just going to move him over there a little bit. So we need to see first off whether, so I'm just gonna go, where's my instances? And where is check instance? Uh, if instance exists, yes. If instance, so we first off need to show, show, if there's no boxes falling, we first off need to see if there is an object Lazarus um, standing. So i.e. whether he's, He's there, right? Whether he still exists. So we're checking for an object of object Lazarus standing. Okay. So if the instance exists of object Lazarus standing, so if there's an instance of if there's no boxes falling, and if there's an instance of Lazarus standing actually being on still in the screen then we need to then take whatever box is at the bottom left hand corner here, which whether it be the stone, metal, wood, or card, and we need to change it into uh, a falling one. So now we need to go and check instance. So check, or um, sorry, change instance, sorry, my bad. We change instance, right here. So, change instance and what we're going to do is change the instance of um, every instance of object to make a bit more room here every instance of object stone next let me get down easier down here object stone next so change instance, every instance objects object stone next to object stone falling. Done. And we need to do the same for the other ones. So change instance to every instance of object metal next. Uh, no, that's wrong. Object metal next here and in here that should be object metal falling. Right. We need to change every instance of object wood next to object wood 
falling. And finally, we need to change every instance of object card next to, oh, up here, sorry, object card next to object card falling. Ah, <sighs> jeez. Okay, so let's just run through that briefly and see if it makes a bit of sense. So what actually happens here, first off we check, is there any falling boxes? No, there's not. So if there's no boxes currently falling, and if there is still Lazarus in the game, then we need to change every instance of any one of these. Now remember, there's only one box in the bottom left hand corner. There's only one box next. And it may be stone, it may be metal, maybe wood, maybe car, but there's only one. So whatever's down here gets changed into a falling version of it. And it starts falling down the screen. So then, once we've done that, we then have to, the next box is missing. So we need now need to, again, choose another um, box to go down there. So we need to go, um, what was it again? It was to choose. So see from there, so just choose, right? So you choose again. Option one was OBJ object um, stone next plus OBJ metal next plus. Wood next plus OBJ card next. And just as we did previously in the create one, we need to assign that to the box variable. So let's see. Go to the box variable. Yeah, that's right. And then we also need to create an instance the exact same one we did here can we actually just let's just copy that and then come over to step and see if I can just paste it in here all of that so you got to come under kin instead there so we need to choose one of those one four we need to then put it in the bottom left hand corner again and the next thing we need to do is we now need to say falling box because there actually is a box for you now has to change to one so I'm going to go um, variable, assign variable, falling box, oops, and make him one. So basically it will not do this again because, because this is going to run every single tick of the clock. So it's not going to enter into this loop again until that box that we have just released hits the bottom. So, now what we need to do is we need to tell the computer that the box has reached the bottom. So, we then, if I can close him, we then we need to go into each of our object um, stone, or each of our objects down here, so the, each of the boxes, objects they are, we need to go into stone, so, because remember, the box reaches the bottom, then it will turn into, when the falling stone reaches the bottom, it will turn into just a plain object stone. So, therefore, upon the creation of object stone, we want to um, assign a variable again. And the variable we want to assign is um, falling box. And we want to assign it the value of zero because it no longer exists. But it's the falling box variable not in here, but it's in the control. Okay, and I'm just going to copy that because we're going to use that four more times. Close him up. Object metal. Add. Create event. Paste. Or we should be able to actually copy an event. Oh, oh there we go. Object wood. Right mouse click. Paste event. So, reaches the bottom, it turns into zero. Object card, paste event. Right, let's see. Okay, big fingers crossed, and let's see if we haven't mucked up the last two videos. Let's do a bit of a test run. So, let's play. And I'll bring him up here, and nothing. 
things happen. Hmm. That's one of the side of it. See if I can work out. Oh, of course that's like happened because we haven't put the control event into the room. So into the room, bring control event up here. For some reason grids changed back to 32 by 32 spots here and then here. Uh, maybe we'll go 40 by 40 and keep it as that. Okay, so I'm back and I've worked out the error of my ways. Um, you notice down here the box that actually is down here is a card box, um, so it's not the metal or, or any other ones. So let's just see what happens. Let's go have a look at the situation. If instance exists, I'm just going to oh, shift is my spaces. So I'm going to look down at the, about the instance of the card form. So if I check here. And I've chosen the wrong box. I said OBJK. So it needs to change the instance of any instance of card next. There we go. And that should make the card full. So let's just see. Press play. And yes, he's falling. So I'm just going to move that way. And yes, and you can see the different boxes appearing up here. And it's coming down. Oh, but why are they changing to stone? I don't want them changing to stone. They're all changing to stone. I think it's got something to do with a duplicate. So let's go have a look. Does he get squashed though? Yes, he gets squashed. Awesome. So I'm going to close that and let's go back and look at the objects falling. So OBJ, well, stone was fine. Um, metal falling, and it was a simple mistake because of the duplication that I missed. That when it. Uh, sorry, I'm in the metal. So when metal range it changed into it says B direction it stops. It changed into an instance of metal object. Um, metal radio and object wall need to change into object metal. Okay, so simple mistakes, that's right. That's that one closed there, object metal, then object wood we had to fix, wood falling. So where the object was stone, that's right. No, if you hit stone, it should change into, because it's the wood that's falling, it should change into object wood. There we are. And object here, should not be object stone, should be object wood. Object wood should change into object wood. An object card should be destroyed. So make sure and check that metal here. I think I missed this one here. Metal, 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 destroyed. Destroyed, okay, cool. And then we change all the wood. So the wood needs to be, it changes to wood. Object wood, stone changes to wood and I'm going to change all the ones okay so then cards the last one here so card object card change into object card stone changes into object card um, object wall changes to object card object wood changes to object card and object card changes to object card and extra brownie points if you guys managed to work that out in the last video that I made a mistake. Um, I could lie and say I planned that all, but we all know that's a, a teacher's lie. So let's see. Does it stay? Yay, it stays cardboard. All right, I still can't jump left, but I can jump right now. Let's see if we can get my same crush. So I've got wood coming down. And I've got card coming down. Let's see if we can make the wood crush the card below us. Is it going to do that? Yes. 
the wood's coming down here. I've got metal, so metal should crush the card. Oh, metal, metal didn't work. Hmm, why is that? Okay, so let's do some more problem solving. Close. So that was in the controller, I think. So when object, so change all instances of object metal next, change it to object metal falling. Change instance of object metal next into object metal falling. That should have worked. One, two, three, four. Okay, I'm going to have to pause this and see if I can work this one out. Okay, so I found what the error was, which I'm still not quite sure why this was the error, but the problem was that a number of the rooms, another of the walls that I had, I had them on the Lazarus level, not on the wall level, and it seems to be playing up with the... Um, with the way the objects were interacting with each other. So all the ones I put in here, all the little humps that he had, um, they were actually under, accidentally on the Lazarus level. So that was somehow playing up with the um, with the objects, the boxes of objects falling. Because now I'm playing without them being there and I've gone through and I've cycled through every single one of the boxes and we'll just keep going till we get one of each one and they all are working fine so i'm just waiting for a stone one now i went too early a couple of wood ones there's another metal one and another metal one Another metal one. Yeah, here's a stone one. So let's see if the stone works. Stone works. So for some reason that seems to be the error. Um, and I could look into it deeply and try to work it out, but honestly, it's working and it's late. So I think we'll just call it quits there. Well, there we have it. We have our boxes falling and Lazarus needing to dodge them and everything's working nice and smoothly. You can see that we have our, um, we have learnt about the action of choose and we also learned about the concept of flag variables.